Work it, make it, do it, makes us harder, better, faster, stronger. Alright, man, torture talk. Like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, man, look, so today, I don't know why this joint's so loud. Why is it so loud? What's going on here? I don't know. Somebody's been messing with something or something down here. I don't know, man. This joint crazy loud in my ears. Maybe because I got the headphones on uh, without something over my ears. Anyway, uh, yeah, man, so today we're going to be talking about is there hope for hip hop? Because, you know, the narrative now is hip hop is actually dead and there's really nobody around. You know what I mean? Save the day, but Kendrick. So is hip hop really in a bad space or is this a good thing for a reboot? Before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies. Put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, you can. Thank you for all the donations. I really appreciate that. Really appreciate you guys. Thank you. You want to leave a donation? Links is on the screen. Cash at PayPal is in the description. All that good stuff. Let me know where you're from. They call me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000. Yeah. In a million by Monday. So we're going to get to it, man. Let's do it. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. So let's go. Is it just me or is hip hop waking up? These past couple years, the mainstream has been filled with nothing but copycats and shameless cash grabs. But it seems like we're finally turning a corner now. Drake is washed, Ice Spice is falling off, Ian is white, it's over. Will hip hop revive itself or will it end up underground and culturally irrelevant like rock music? Well, you know they say things That's a good question. Where would hip hop go from here? Because I believe that the influence is there and it's going to sound crazy. I have a lot to say about this. This is going to sound really crazy. I believe hip hop. I hate to say this, but I believe culturally hip hop is ours, but outside of the world, it's not ours anymore. I mean, we own, we, we, we started it. But we created this uh, this thing where it's all over the place. And unless we do something about it, we're going to get eliminated from it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get pushed out. The CEOs of the company of hip hop, which is our culture, is going to push us out. And they're going to take it and they're going to do something else with it without us. You already see it in these other countries. They're doing it. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep it going go in cycles and the fact of the matter is we've been here before if hip-hop is dead and is in a vulnerable state what role did you play in it the corporate side of the business they killed it you know what i'm saying is also we got too much hustle in us because there's so much bread in the rap game that we kind of get lost in it every kind of music gets stagnant every once in a while and then it comes to a point where it needs to be re-energized and in a lot of ways nas was completely right he had watched hip-hop grow out of the concrete in the 80s skyrocket into the mainstream in the 90s dominate the charts in the early 2000s only to be completely oversaturated just a couple years later label executives holding all the power meant artists had less creative control over their output industry plants and one hit wonders were everywhere. I mean, in the late 2000s, you literally had artists that were making songs that exclusively served as cool ringtones and nothing else. It was a whole subgenre called ringtone rap. Okay, how's that for quality? <laughs> Yo, it definitely was. It definitely was a whole a whole subgenre of ringtone rappers. <laughs> it was kind of like the internet rappers, ringtone rappers. You're like, what you do? I'm a ringtone rapper, bro. I make, I make tunes for... I Maybe mean, I was going to the studio and this dude, he was hype. He was so hype because he did like three or four different uh, ringtones and he had to join where you call, if you call him, it'll come up 
like you call instead of it ringing, it'll it'll play his song. He was hype. He was hype. Like, yeah, man, I'm gonna be a billionaire off this shit, bro. I'm telling you, this shit is fire. I was like, dog. <laughs> oh man, this shit was funny. Here goes. Yeah, the labels pretty much figured out the formula. It took them a while, but they did. And then they milked it until there was nothing left but Black Eyed Peas and B.O.B. I bet all of this sounds kind of familiar to you. That's pretty much the same state of oversaturation hip hop has been at these past couple years. But we know all of this already. The question is, will hip hop be able to pull itself up by its bootstraps like it did before? Well, in short, no. I mean, unfortunately, Soulja Boy can't save hip hop twice. And I'm actually being like semi-serious here. Hear me out. Despite how shitty his music was, at the time of his arrival, Soulja Boy was a sign of hope for hip hop. A symbol for young, independent artists all around the globe. Forecasting a future where rappers could independently cultivate an audience and pop off through the internet. The agency that came with platforms like that Piff, like SoundCloud, like YouTube, helped propel many young artists, many obscure artists into superstardom. And That's a fact. You ain't gonna see that too much no more because the oversaturation of hip hop has begun a long time ago. Maybe, maybe in the early 2000s. If you guys don't know what um, what that means is it's so many people doing music that is not good. They're doing music right in their crib, right in their house with their boy, make the beats. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's fine. But you also have to understand that, that the quality of your stuff, because you can make, listen, you can make some music and the music could be okay. The music could be actually good. But if the sound quality isn't good, your music is going to be considered trash. You know what I'm saying? And you, you're, going to, you're going against people who literally go to the studio and you have $5 million studios where they mix and master things real quickly. But that's another thing that I think diminishes the quality of hip hop is a lot of people do it and they don't have the sound quality behind it. They just throw a song up and the bass would be too loud or whatever. And their friends be like, this joint fire. And it's like... Is it really fire or is it just because you, that's your boy? You know what I'm saying? rap into eventually the most popular genre in the world. For a little while there, the internet took the labels out of the equation and put the power back in the artist's hands to create freely and grow organically. But again, unfortunately, after a while, labels figured out the formula and then they milked it until there was nothing left but... That's a hundred percent facts. The, the artists at one point left the labels. And the labels were scrambling. They didn't know what to do. They did not know what to do. And then the labels figured it out. They started signing certain people, putting them in 360 deals, uh, uh, making them uh, put up stuff on these different uh, um, SoundClouds, and not SoundCloud, uh, Spotify and all this. They started making deals with them, and they changed everything. And now for you to be independent is, is even hard because the record, the record labels – they could easily blackball you now. It's, it's easier to blackball you now than it was before. You know what I'm saying? They could make a couple of calls and then your stuff won't get played on no streaming service. And that's what it was. See, before you could put your music out. You know what I'm saying? You could put it out, press up a CD, hand them out, everybody's printing. in. They'll copy a CD and pass them around. Now most people upload it to CD Baby and and uh, uh, that Piff. Not that Piff, but, uh, you know, that Piff is old, but... People upload their stuff to these different websites and uh not CD Baby, what is it? Uh uh I can't remember I can't remember the name of it, but basically, and they distribute all your joints to uh to uh what they call that? To all these different streaming sites. I promise y'all I'm not cross-eyed. These joints make me look cross-eyed, I promise y'all. I'm not cross-eyed. <laughs> I'm just looking at it now, like damn. I look like I'm, I'm cross-eyed. Because <laughs> like, that's why you always wearing shades, nigga, because you're cross-eyed. <laughs> nah, I'm not. But look, uh, so that's basically what they were doing. And now they're at the forefront and they made deals with all of these different streaming companies. So it's easier for, you, for them not to play your music. Easy. Lil Mabu and 
Okay, that's just bad enough on its own. And now we're at the point where labels are in complete control of the radio, of every streaming service, every curated playlist, every algorithm. So if there's nothing that's gonna put the power back in the artist's hands anytime soon, what's gonna be hip hop saving race? Okay, so here's the thing, I kinda lied. It wasn't just Soulja Boy that kept hip hop going at the turn of the 2000s. It was one more thing. In reality, back then, the main source of innovation and artistry came from rappers putting other rappers on. You know, from the people that wish to see him hip hop thrive as a art form and not just as a market. They laid the musical foundations and eventually empowered the artists that will go on to conquer hip hop in the 2010s. Whether we're talking about Jay-Z with J. Cole, Top Dog and Dr. Dre with Kendrick, who else? Lil Wayne with Nicki and Drake, um, Kanye with, with what's his name? Travis Scott, Kid Cudi, um, Big Sean, Chief Keef, um, damn. Push a T, damn, Kanye did a lot, huh? The point I want to make is that the responsibility should be on. Uh, I don't know about Chief Keef though, but I don't know how he really put on Chief Keef. Did he put on Chief Keef? I don't know. I know Cruel Summer was classic. That that beat is, that's one of the greatest beats ever made. Oof. I think it's Cruel Summer. I think that was the, the name of the album was Cruel Summer, but the song. The last song with Chief Keef and Big Sean, I think Kanye West, the remix to that song. Oh God, that song is fire. The big artists, I mean, it shouldn't be on the big artists, but it is on the big artists to establish a foundation for the real talent to flourish. Because the A&Rs and label executives are not going to do it themselves, okay? I think that's pretty evident at this point. The people who are personally invested in hip hop are gonna have to carry its legacy. That's the reality of the situation. Which brings us back to today, where one artist has taken it upon himself to single-handedly push this rejuvenation into full force. Can you guess who it is? I mean, it's post-May 2024, and it's a YouTube video about rap music. Yeah, I'm talking about Kendrick Lamar, and also Drake, because why not? Bro, this whole like rap beef is such a cash cow. Do you know how many bands were made off this beef? I was like chilling, but other people were making bank off this beef. That's crazy. That's a hundred percent facts. It was so many people making money off of this, bro. This these two dudes made people millionaires, bro. Like real shit. Y'all don't even understand. Like these two dudes made people like that battle. It made a lot of people a lot of money. That's just that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I was actually about to waste this whole part of the vid talking about what's the dirt, but I actually thought about it. And yeah, let me not do that. <laughs> Instead, I want to talk about that Watch the Party Die single Kendrick dropped on his IG because everyone seemed to kind of brush over it. Bro, why did nobody catch that he was talking about Diddy in that song? I think it's pretty obvious, like even by the refrain, Watch the Party Die, like that's a very interesting choice of words. Who's the one celebrity you know to be synonymous with parties? He's the party guy. Also, how about the fact that the song came out literally just a couple days before Diddy got arrested? Listen, if this was done by Shout out to the GOAT. <laughs> ah, Kendrick, bro. Damn, bro. Kendrick Lamar, man. What can you say about this dude, man? I think it's time to watch the party die. The shit got too wicked to apologize. Man. Anybody but Kendrick, I could see all of this being a coincidence, but bro, Kendrick doesn't do coincidences. The timing, the choice of words, the content matter, it's all very planned out and deliberate. And if he dropped on 9-11, does that mean he's insinuating that Diddy and Drake are the twin towers and now they're both knocked down? Yeah, I don't know. I'll leave the egregious reaching to what's the dirt. <laughs> he, he. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah oh, man, that right there. That was a good that was a good one. I like that. That was a good one. Uh, the Twin Towers Drake and uh and Diddy.
<laughs> party, the party boys. <laughs> is the best after all. I think people often get bogged down with the personal disses between Kendrick and Drake, but I still don't think this beef was really personal at all. At the end of the day, it was about Kendrick proving a point and Drake defending himself. Why do you think he set the beef up by saying, money, power, respect, the last one is better. Say it's a lot of goofies with a check. What Kendrick set out to prove, at least going off this verse, is that respect and substance beat numbers every single time. And because that, that is 100% facts. That's 100% facts. Respect trumps everything. If you got respect, it trumps everything. You literally can be in control of your whole destiny if you have respect. Respect could get you anything. Money, anything you could think of, respect is where it's at. Love, money, riches. Only thing you don't get is negativity with respect. You know what I'm saying? Tell me somebody who has a lot of respect that people uh, consider them negative, a negative person. You know what I'm saying? If you feel as though they're negative, then you must don't respect them. Respect trumps everything, bro. Remember that. That's like the objective truth. The man succeeded with flying colors. Yeah, yeah, I think it's safe to say that message resonated with the audience and a huge one at that. I mean, everyone was watching this beef go down. We've already seen it have its effect, not only on Drake's career, which has been nosediving ever since the Heart Part 6, but also other artists' careers, which are cut from a similar uh, uninspired opportunistic cloth. Like for example, Ice Spice, whose album just flopped, Die up. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't you let, I can't let you just put slander on the girl's name here. Icy Spicy. I can't let you slander Icy Spicy, bro. Ah, uh, go ahead, do your thing. I ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna be quiet. Do you think? Symbolically, might I add. And I see people wondering, like, why this is. Is it because she lost the weight and her ass is just not as fat anymore? Is it because people think she's mean? <laughs> yeah, people liked Ice Spice because of her personality. That's why she was famous. So you wanna know why Ice Spice is falling off? Okay. She brings nothing to the table. She's always just been here to ball out and have a good time, which I think would be fine like a year ago. But with the aftermath of this beef, I think things are kind of different now. Kendrick has already exposed this money hungry, cloud chasey persona slash product to the masses. And I don't know. Shit like this may just not be that cool anymore. What the fuck is a jaddy anyway? I mean, just listen to Ice yeah, Spice talk about her music. But, like, I'm just going with it. Like, those are six songs that I already made. So we pushing that right now. You know, fans gonna eat that up. Does that sound like somebody who cares about their fucking art? Who's <laughs> passionate about the... Ah, man, I'll be honest with y'all. I love Ice Spice, man. I don't like her music. You know what I'm saying? I think her music is trash. But I just like her personality. I like how she carries herself. I like how she talk. I love how New York women talk. New York, New York girls, New York women have, well, I would say hood New York women because there are some New York girls that don't talk like that, New York women. But the ones that's, that's from the hood, they have such a, I don't know what it is about their voice. Yeah, you know I mean, I don't know what it is. They sound all sound similar, but and it and it and the thing is too, a lot of y'all probably don't notice this, but it changes throughout throughout the years. Like years ago, they didn't sound like this. New York girls didn't sound like this. Now they sound like this. I like this version of New York women. I like their voice. The New York ghetto girls. I love how they talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love it. Product they're making? No. That's someone who knows they're putting out garbage. They know what they're doing is trendy. And you give people like this a platform? Bro, this shit sucks. I don't give a fuck if you were getting lit post pandemic 2022, 2021 era and everything was a fucking party. I don't get- What's going on here? I, I, I can't. <laughs> 
I don't even know what to say. I'm just, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be quiet. Other shit. This is objectively ass and hollow and soulless. It's a soulless product. Whatever, bro. Whatever. The fans are gonna eat it up, you know? <laughs> Jesus Christ. The fact of the matter is, um, <laughs> We're pretty much treading on new ground here. Like we've never seen a catalyst this strong in hip hop or any music genre for that matter. The effect this beef could have on culture is is unprecedented. I mean, this this may just be the beginning. See, because Kendrick's argument is not only a musical one, but also a cultural one. He believes that through his music, he can not only change the state of rap, but the state of the world as a whole. Change the idea of who the youth should be looking up to and what they should strive for <sighs> because look at Drake the man has all the money in the world all the numbers and he's still fundamentally insecure he's still unhappy with no real friends around him he still can't help that's a hundred percent facts he is fundamentally fundamentally insecure he really is he has Drake has everything everything an artist could ever want and he still is not satisfied with himself. If I was, if I'm Drake, if I'm Drake, and I was this successful, I would have probably made like 10 albums already ready that is ready to go in there. Like I would, I would take a whole lot of time to make really good music at this point in my career. Cause you ain't got nothing else to lose. You ain't got nothing to lose now. You, 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 you made it. You passed the threshold of being uh, successful. I just don't see why he doesn't doesn't do that. Himself from incessantly lying and being an irresponsible adult at 37 years old. Just look at all the people defending Drake. They're all mirror images of him. Like, bro, you go on Twitter and you see these guys trying to defend Drake by making these comparisons. Like, Kendrick did this 14 years ago, but when Drake does it, and they're just bad comparisons and they never make any sense, but they just keep coming back with the stupidest shit. And it's so annoying. And all of us see these Drake fans coping and thinks to ourselves, wow, they really can't see reason here. But really, I think it's much deeper than that. They feel attacked because Kendrick coming at Drake indirectly means Kendrick is coming at them. Since most of them share the same worldview as Drake. And That's a fact. And I've been saying this. Them Kendrick Kendrick's putting Drake in his place. They feel like he, he they're getting put in their place too. That's why they that's why they hate him so much. It's like how can you hate a man who wants better for hip hop? I don't understand this. I literally seen people arguing the fact that Kendrick want to bring real hip hop back. He wants to bring real hip hop back, and niggas was arguing that. They was arguing. Why he want to do that and the shit and shouldn't that shouldn't matter now? Like it's crazy. Yearn for that same lifestyle, so they can't be critical in any way of Aubrey because that would require them looking inward and being critical of themselves, and they're just not gonna do that. After all, it's much easier to believe. Over yo, we coming back. Trust me. You think you think it's over? We coming. We spinning the block. Over yo, spinning the block. I'm telling you right now. You think it's over? <laughs> Dude literally said that. <laughs> a lie than to face the truth. So what should our expectations be for the future? The kind of renaissance I actually could see happening is not anything drastic. I mean, don't expect a return to like 90s levels of lyricism or Ghostface kill it to start charting again. The sound of hip hop will still evolve as it's evolved up until this point. We just may see an increasing demand and appreciation for artists who actually care about their craft who are passionate about making hip hop music, regardless of how substantive or lyrical it is. The two examples I would like to use for this are uh, Travis Scott's Utopia and Yeet's 2093. Especially Yeet's album because it fell completely on deaf ears. I mean, when his fans were like shitting on him for that, I was heartbroken. Because it sounds like this nigga Yeet done made a 22 song album and half of them bitches were throwaways. And before y'all niggas get in my comments talking about how I'm a TikTok fan and a TikTok listener, guess what buddy, you can keep that shit because I am. You seriously just said you wanted TikTok music? That's, that's a problem. You should be ashamed of yourself. He said, 
because I am. <laughs> Before you get in my comments and tell me that I'm a TikTok user and a TikTok, because I am. It's like, bro, like, yo, let's keep it going. Because you can really hear it in this album. Like, he put everything into this. He had fun making this project. He did it because he thought it was dope. He didn't calculate it on a whiteboard, okay? How do we maximize market exposure? How do we maximize revenue? Utilize social media trends to maximize exposure. Less people being strategic with their output and more people being intuitive and, and passionate about their output. That's what I want to see more of. We've seen hip hop become unrecognizable. Now it's time for those who care to take it back. Crazy. That was crazy. See, the thing is, man, I think that uh, he's right about that when it comes to hip hop and when it comes to uh, what's going on with Kendrick. I definitely think Kendrick Lamar has put himself in a position where he can actually change the trajectory of hip hop and where it's going. He can literally change it. I just don't think that there's a lot of people who has the influence like him anymore. You know what I'm saying? And he has the momentum on his side. And it's going to stay with him for a little while. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to go nowhere. A lot of these other artists, man, they just, I think they lost their way. I think they feel like, because now they see that stuff is not really charting. It's frustrating to see it just stuff not charting. And you trying to make a hit. And the hits is not hitting like they used to. You know what I'm saying? It's like, what do you do in this situation? So, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think, man. Is hip hop uh, in a great space now, or you know, or is, is it going to return back to form, or is uh, is is it just going to take a break for now, and then people are going to come back and do something different? Let me know, man. Y'all have yourself a good morning, man. Twelve o'clock show coming up. See y'all, peace, bye. <laughs>